Hello and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo and today we are going to be looking at the key to key signatures. I'm going to show you the basic functionality of the key signature tool and how to change keys and, and all that stuff uh, right in Finale and it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is show you how to change a key and we can do that simply from the selection tool. If we right click in a measure or option click, we will get the contextual menu and we can find key signature and you will see a list of common keys that Finale has decided are the most common keys and you, s you can select one of those keys and there you go, E major. Um, we can get the same contextual menu from the uh, key signature tool from the main palette. So if we click on that tool and we right click, we will get that contextual menu directly and we can choose E major. All right. If there's a key that does that you want that doesn't exist in those common keys, the next thing we're going to do is we can find other. And the key signature dialog box will appear. And I'm going to show you two other ways to get to that dialog box. If we just all we have to do is just double click from the key signature tool and it appears. Or if we have it selected, we can hit return and it also appears. All right, and so from this dialog box, we can change the keys. And the way we do that is use the arrows up and down to scroll through the different keys, or you can actually just use that 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 uh, scroll bar to uh, do the same thing. All right, so we want to go to E major again, and we just uh, hit OK, and there we go. Easy as that. Uh, the other thing in here, just like with the cleft tool, you notice the measure region. So you have the options to change the key of measure two through whatever you choose. You can change the key from measure two through the end of the piece and two through to the next key change, which is usually the default setting that, that starts out when you, when you enter this dialog box. See, there it is. All right. And that will do exactly what it says it will. It'll change the key until the next key, which I have a, a key signature here in bar six. So this will change only two through six. All right, easy enough. And as I pointed out here, there uh, are major, minor, keyless, and non-standard key options. In this video, I'm only going to deal with major and minor keys. Okay. Um, and let's let's look at uh, some things with the minor keys because there is a little bit of a difference between major and minor keys in, in the way Finale handles them. Obviously, the the key signatures themselves are going to be the same. For example, D major with two sharps is going to be the same two sharps with B minor. But uh, there are some uh, differences in, in how Finale handles it, and I'll show you that right now. So I'm going to go to this third measure, and we're going to choose a minor key. We're going to choose B minor. All right. Click OK, and the first thing you notice is that uh, Finale will restate the key signature there. If you don't particularly care for that, you, there's, it's easy to change. Go to the Document menu, Document Options, Find Key Signatures, and it's the third option, Redisplay Key Signature if only mode is changing. If you uncheck that and hit Apply, it, that whole thing will go away. So uh, for now, we'll leave that there. Uh, the other major thing that Finale will do uh, with with uh, major and minor uh, key signature differences, is it, it has to do with the spelling tables, and spelling tables is essentially the way that Finale will will uh, handle uh, chromatic notes in a default manner, and it will handle chromatic notes differently between major and minor keys. I'm going to illustrate that real quick right now. So remember, this bar is in D ma major. The next bar is in B minor. I'm just going to enter a chromatic scale in both measures, starting on D. There's D major, and this is the chromatic scale starting on D in B minor. And get out of there to get it to re-space automatically. And you'll notice that uh, some of the notes are different. So in D major, that you have the E flat versus D sharp in B minor. The F natural versus the E sharp. Uh, let's see what else we have. The B flat versus the A sharp, and everything else is the same. Um, it, it finale handles this on purpose. Uh, you know, it's, it is handy, for example, in B minor to uh, finale correctly assumes that the D sharp is going to be more common than the E flat in the key of B minor. So it, it kind of sets that up for you automatically. Of course, any of these accidentals can be changed, you know, manually, um, through the speedy entry tool or the, um, the simple entry tool. And you, you'll be able to adjust those a as you need to, but from a from a default standpoint, that's that's what fina that's how Finale is going to handle that. All right, let's just go back here and change this back. Oh, stop, stop! Change this bar back to D major for a second. 
All right. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, changing the keys when you already have music in the in the staffs. All right. So I've got this first bar set up with some music in the key of D major, and I'm going to change this to E major. All right. So click on the bar, click E major. And you're going to want to deal with the bottom half of this dialog box. Now, this is going to allow you to do certain things with the pitches going from D major to E major. And the most obvious thing you're probably going to want to do is the transpose notes feature. So uh, you're probably going to, from D major to E major, you're probably going to transpose the notes up, right? So have that selected, click OK, and your notes will follow the key signature, right? If you had selected down, incidentally, finale will. Oh, I guess I got to do E major, right? E major transpose notes down. Finale will transpose those notes down a seventh, right? It's probably not what you want to do. So it's important to recognize when you're transposing keys for uh, existing music that you got to be careful about which way you're transposing the notes, right? From D to E, you'd want to go up. From D to C, you'd probably want to go down. Um, and of course, you know, D to A flat, for example, you have your choice and you're going to have to choose. Um, the other thing you can do is hold notes to original pitches either chromatically and harmonically or chromatically, all right? And let's say, for example, you've written a passage of notes in D major and you realize, well, the notes are right, but I should have put this uh, in e, e major, right? I want to retain the notes but keep uh, but change the key to E major. So that's where hold notes to original pitches comes into. And there's a slight difference between enharmonic and chromatic. Um, and harmonic, let's just show you that first. We go to E major, hold notes and harmonically, and we get this passage now stays. The F sharp in the beginning of the flute stays, but the B flat changes to A sharp. And what Finale is doing is it's it's uh, recalculating that note based on the spelling tables, all right, which is uh, uh, just important to know. If we were to undo that and choose chromatic, Finale will hold that B flat as well. So it's just basically keeping the notes exactly as you have them written. All right. Uh, another handy thing I should have mentioned, which I forgot, is that if you're transposing notes up, for example, and you're going from D major to E major, um, it will also change the chord symbols here. You'll notice that the, this used to say D, G minor, uh, A, D, and now it says E. Now they're in E. So if we undo that, you can see that that changed. Finale will not change those chords, however, if you are holding notes chromatically, right? That's handy. It keeps them there. So that's kind of exactly what you want to do. And there's one other option. There's hold notes to same, same staff line modally, right? So if I were to change from uh, D major, let's say, to D minor, right? We're going from B minor to D minor and hold notes to same staff modally. What it's going to do is basically hold that F in the flute on that same pitch, except the uh, uh, pitch class is going to go from F sharp to F natural, like this. Right? You see now we have an F natural instead of F sharp. It will screw up some accidentals on you. For example, this uh, B flat it changed to B double flat, which you'll have to go back and fix. But uh, And the other thing, it will not change the chord symbols when you hold modally. So just be aware of that, all right? Um, one last thing I'm going to point out. If if you're changing keys, oh, let's just first undo all of that, right? So we'll go back to the, the way it was. If we're changing keys from measure one through the end of the piece, another option appears down here called transpose all keys proportionally. You're probably going to want to have that checked. And what that will do is that any key that exists after measure wherever you select from through the end of the piece is going to transpose the same amount. So I'm going from D major to E major at the beginning, and this passage in B flat over here is going to go from B flat to C if I have that uh, checked. And we're always going to want to wrap keys, by the way. So I click OK, and you'll see that this passage in B flat changes to C major. This is kind of important because you can get in trouble. If you select uh, through end of piece and change to E major and you don't have this checked, Look what happens. It changes that passage from B flat to E major, which is probably not what you want to do. I, I've seen this. This this is a, a way to very easily get in trouble, and I've seen this happen so many times. Um, and I, unfortunately, the default for this is that this uh, option is unchecked. And I really wish that Finale's default here would have this checked. 
um, when you're changing keys through the end of the piece, all right? So just, just be careful when you're doing something like that to always make sure that this is checked, all right? And that will appear like that. And uh, so that's, you know, the, b the basic uh, the functions of the key signature. Uh, I'm going to do a, few, a couple more lessons on, on a couple uh, advanced things with the key signature, including some document options. And I'll, I'll show you the, um, the keyless uh, key signature as well and a couple other things. And uh, so that's it for this uh, tutorial. Uh, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.